In this video, we're discussing dividing power series. So let's say you have a couple of power series and they have the same center and you want to divide them. Well, you it turns out you can divide them and you're going to divide them using basically the same method that you use to divide polynomials. Whenever you learned long division of polynomials, um, well, you learned something that, that's very similar to the process that we're about to use to divide two power series. Now, this, pro or this quotient of the two power series will converge on the intersection of the intervals of convergence of this series and this series. So we need x values for which this series and this series converge at the same time, but now there's one um, extra qualifier when you're dividing series. That's the interval of convergence for the product series as well. If I multiply those together, it's just the, um, those, the product will converge on the intersections of the intervals of convergence of the ones we started with. We just need both of them to be well-defined so that when we multiply them, the product is well-defined. Um, but with, div with division, it's a little different. The denominator can never be zero. So we've got to add this extra qualifier. We have to exclude any x values that cause this series in the denominator to converge to zero. Um, so with that in mind, we're going to divide a couple of power series. Now, in the next lesson, we'll learn, we'll find power series representations for basic functions like sine, cosine, e to the x, um, natural log of x, and so on. Um, so I'm just going to, to give you a preview, just a hint that this power series that we're about to find is going to represent the cotangent function. Cotangent of x is cosine of x over sine of x. And cosine of x turns out that it can be written this way. It's negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n over 2n factorial. And it turns out that sine of x can be written this way. These are the Maclaurin series for cosine and sine, and we'll prove that later. But let's divide these and find the um, Maclaurin series for cotangent of x. Now notice that I've got Maclaurin, or these, these two series, and they're centered at zero. The fact that they're centered at zero makes the Maclaurin series, which again, we'll talk about later. Um, but at x equals zero, sine of uh, sine of x is also zero. Sine of zero is zero. Um, so this will be undefined when x equals zero because that series in the denominator will converge to zero at zero. Um, but if we're near zero and x is not equal to zero, this series will represent cotangent of x um, pretty nicely. And it's not exactly going to be a power series. It's going to be really close to a power series as we'll see. So in n equals zero, we get one and this has even terms because 2n is always even and then we've got the same number that you've got in the exponent there down here but it's factorial so i've got when n is zero we get negative one to the zero x to the zero over zero factorial which is one and when n is one we have a negative x squared over two factorial when n is two we've got a positive x to the fourth over four factorial because two times two is four when n is 3, negative 1 cubed is negative. 2 times 3 is 6. And then we keep going. We've got x to the 8th over 8 factorial, and so on. The sine series down here, it's similar. It just has odd terms instead of even terms. It ends up being x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial minus x to the 7th over 7 factorial. These patterns make me really happy. When I learned about this for the first time, it really, it was just satisfying because they're so beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna take this um, series, which looks like an infinitely not long polynomial, and we're going to divide it by this series, which looks like an infinitely long polynomial. So when we do the, the division, it's just gonna be like long division the one in the denominator, that's the divisor. And the divisor goes outside the little division box. I don't actually know what it's called. Let's 
let's see. And that's 120. And I don't know what seven factorial is. Well, it's five factorial, which is 120 times six times seven. So it ends up being 5,040 plus higher degree terms. That goes outside and then the series in the numerator that goes inside. Now I know that when you normally do this, you usually put the highest power of x over here and then you have descending powers of x and the same is true here. But we can't do that this time because we've got larger and larger and larger powers of x. So we're gonna change the order a bit. We're going to require that the smallest power, the lowest power of x is here and the lowest power of x is here. So that's going to change our long di division procedure just a little bit. That's okay. Uh, 4 factorial is 24. 6 factorial, I don't know what that is. But I know it's 120 times 6. Oh, I guess I should have known that. 720. Okay. So you're just going to do long division. Um, this going into this. Now, because of the fact that cotangent is undefined at zero, we're going to get something that's not exactly a power series. And it's not exactly a power series because, um, well, we're going to have a x to a negative power, and power series only include x's to positive powers or x to the zero. So this is a little different. Sorry, you guys didn't see that. There we go. All right. So I ask myself, just like I'm doing long division, and let's say we were asked to find the first, let's say, let's say the first three non-zero terms. Now I will always have to ask you for the first few non-zero terms of any product or quotient because we're not able to do all of them at once. So I ask myself, x goes into 1 how many times? And if you're saying no times, you're absolutely right, x does not go into 1. Alternatively, ask yourself, um, x times what would give me 1? And this is where the result is not a power series x times 1 over x would give me 1. So if I'm just asking myself this question, what do I multiply by to get 1? I have to multiply by 1 over x. And you see right away we've got a problem that x equals 0, but that's because the denominator is 0. This is a sum of infinitely many zeros when x equals 0. It's sine of 0. Um, turns out to be sine of 0, and we'll prove that later. Um, so we get a 1 over x there, and that's okay. As long as x isn't 0, we're good to go. Um, so we say this times what will give me 1? That times 1 over x gives me 1. And then you take that 1 over x and you distribute it to all of these terms. So 1 over x times x is 1 by design, good. 1 over x times this is just going to lower that power by 1. So we'll have minus x squared over 6. And then this times 1 over x is going to give me an x to the 4th over 120. And then this times 1 over x will give me an x to the 6th over 5040. And then remember what we do with long division, then we're subtracting. Now, whenever you're subtracting polynomials, what you do is you multiply the second polynomial by negative 1, every single term by negative 1, and then you collect like terms. So instead of saying I'm going to subtract this, I'm just going to change all of the signs. So it's like distributing the negative 1, and then I'm adding like terms in the columns. 1 minus 1 is 0. By design, that's good. And then I've got a 1 sixth minus a 1 half times an x squared. And I know you could do 1 sixth minus 1 half without a calculator, but I'm going to break my calculator out um, because I'm going to have some larger fractions in a little bit. So we've got negative one-third times x squared, or negative x squared over 3. And then I've got 1 over 24 minus 1 over 120. So 
So that's 1 over 30 times x to the fourth. And then I've got 1 over 5,040 minus 1 over 720. And that's negative x to the sixth over 840. 1 over 840 times x to the sixth. Okay, and then we start the process over. We say to ourselves, okay, x times what will give me this? I'm trying to get negative x cubed over 3. So I need a negative x squared over 3. Because negative x squared over 3 times x is going to give me the negative x cubed over 3. So I have negative x squared over 3. And then we distribute again. Negative x squared over 3, just that one term, times all of this. This times that gives me, oops, this should be an x squared over 3, not x cubed over 3, because I'm trying to get x squared over 3, and that should just be an x to the first. Sorry, guys. There we go. Negative x times x is negative x squared, and we have the over 3. That was x squared, not x cubed, so that's, gonna, that's why I have to do that. Okay. So this times this gives me a negative x squared over 3, which is good. That's exactly what it should be. That's how I caught my mistake. I said, hey, that's x cubed over 3, and I looked down here and I saw I said I had an x squared over 3. So that led me to correct that, so that's good. If that happens to you, you know that you made a mistake if you, if you see that. Then you distribute the negative x over 3 times this. So that's going to give me a positive x to the 4th. 3 times 6 is 18. And then negative x over 3 times this one is negative x to the 6th over 3 times 120. Okay. I've got two terms so far, and we want the first three non-zero terms. Uh, maybe I'll get the four, first four non-zero terms. Looks like it's not going to be too bad. Let's find the first four non-zero terms of that cotangent series plus the 1 over x. Um, okay, so we, we did this times all of that. We wrote that down here, and we're subtracting. Whenever you subtract a polynomial, you multiply all the... Um, terms of the second polynomial by negative ones, that changes the signs, and then you add like terms and columns. Now all of these have more terms. I'm just choosing not to write them. So negative x squared over 3 plus x squared over 3 is 0. Those reduce. Those are supposed to reduce. That's good. If they don't reduce, you did something wrong. Or that's, a, that's a, an indicator that maybe that expression that you multiplied by isn't the right thing. Now I've got a 1 over 30 times x to the 4th minus 1 over 18 times x to the 4th. So that gives me negative 1 over 45 times x to the 4th. And then I've got negative 1 over 840 plus 1 over 360. gives me six, 1 over 630 times x to the 6th. Okay. So now we're here, and we say to ourselves, x times what would give us this negative x to the 4th over 45? Looks like I need a negative x cubed over 45. And then we distribute again. Negative x cubed over 45 times x is negative x to the fourth over 45. Negative x cubed over 45 times this. Negative times a negative is positive. We end up with x to the sixth. And 45 times six, seven, or 270. For subtracting this series, we just add the opposite change all the signs to negatives, and then collect like terms in the columns. This plus this is zero, so that's gone. And then you've got the x to the sixth term. Um, we end up with 1 over 630 in the numerator, or not numerator, from our first guy. And then we're subtracting 1 over 270. So we end up with negative 2 over 945 times x to the sixth. 
okay. I said I wanted the first four non-zero terms after I modified it. So the last thing I would do is x times what gives me negative two over 945 x to the sixth, and it's negative two over 945 times x to the fifth. I need five more x's to get an x to the sixth. So that is this that is this series divided by this series, and I'm telling you, I'm, I'm giving you a preview. That means that's cotangent of x. Cotangent of x is 1 over x minus x over 3 plus x to the third over 45 minus 2 over 945 times x to the fifth plus higher degree terms. Um, now this is not exactly a series, but it's close. Um, this is the series, but then I've got this x in the denominator, so that makes it not a power series. But it's as close as we could get to a power series. But that 1 over x comes from the fact that the series in the denominator, the series that we started with, this guy over here, if x is 0, I would be dividing by 0, which would be a very bad thing. Um, and that when x is 0, sine of x is also 0. So that actually makes a lot of sense. Um, so that's where that, that 1 over x comes from. OK, so that's how we divide series. Now, remember what we said earlier. This converges on the intersections of the intervals of convergence of the series in the numerator and the series in the denominator, except for any x that would cause the denominator to converge to 0. Um, now, this denominator is sine of x, it turns out, and we'll prove that later when we learn about uh, Taylor series and Maclaurin series. Um, so this actually is going to converge to x at x equals 0, x equals pi, x equals 2 pi, x equals 3 pi, x equals negative pi. All of the multiples of pi, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> we're going to get 0 here. But as long as x is not a multiple of pi, um, this over this um, will converge uh, to this function over here. Um, well, actually, let's not say that. This over this will converge to a function. Um, and yeah, there's no guarantee that that converges to that function. We'd have to, to prove that um, using our convergence theorems, which we'll study later. Uh, so anyway, uh, it, it makes sense that this is going to converge um, as long as the denominator is not zero. Um, and the denominator is 0 and x equals 0, so that's okay.